In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Lumen Christi. Lumen Christi.
don't need to go. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his paschal praise worthily and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Exalt, let them exalt, the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad. Let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice! Let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, in folk with me I ask you the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me the one worthy among the Levites, may pour into me this light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, 
and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Savior, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wipe clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shore through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, 
a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning, burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, 
and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The Word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God has shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young man, stay here with a donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac 
said to his father, Abraham, Father, and Abraham said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide a lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When Abraham and Isaac came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. The angel said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. And I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Oh, 
Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the Faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal Mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant we pray that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out for me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind him, and the pillar of cloud moved in, from in front of them and took its place behind him. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us free from the children of Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots 
and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in their hand, and all the women went out after their with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Let us pray. O God, 
whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife, forsaken and grieved in spirit like the wife of a man's youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandon you, but with great compassion, I will gather you. In overflowing wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me, just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth, so I've sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, I am about to set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the prosperity of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. The word of the Lord.
Almighty ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption, increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way, and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that me may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are our ways your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose purpose and succeed in the things for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Sing for 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear the commandments of life, O Israel. Give ear and learn wisdom. Why is it, O Israel, why is it that you are in the land of your enemies, that you are growing old in a foreign country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted among those in Hades, you have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. If you had walked in the way of God, you would be living in peace forever. Learn where there is wisdom, where there is strength, where there is understanding, so that you may at the same time discern where there is length of days and life, where there is light for the eyes and peace. Who has found her place and who has entered her storehouses? But the one who knows all things knows her. He found her by his understanding. The one who prepared the earth for all time filled it with four-footed creatures the one who sends forth the light, and it goes. He called it, and it obeyed him, trembling. The stars shone in their watches and were glad. He called them, and they said, Here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can be compared to him. He found the whole way to knowledge and gave her to his servant, Jacob, and to Israel, whom he loved. Afterward, she appeared on earth and lived with humanity. She is the book of the commandments of God, the law that endures forever. All who hold her fast will live, and those who forsake her will die. Turn, O Jacob, and take her. Walk toward the shining of her light. Do not give glory, your glory, to another, or your advantages to an alien people. Happy are we, O Israel, for we know what is pleasing to God. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, when the house of Israel lived on their own soil, they defiled it with their ways and their deeds. Their conduct, their conduct in my sight was unclean. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, that they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. 
I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Mm. 
glory to God in the this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. 
in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Most Reverend Father, I bring you a message of great joy, the joy of message of Alleluia. According to Mark, Glory 
When the Sabbath day was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. just listened very attentively to a wide range of scriptural texts, all of which are central to our Christian faith. Beginning with Genesis, we then moved through Exodus and the, and the prophets, until finally hearing the Gospel's proclamation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now is the moment to ask, what's it all mean? What implications does this wondrous announcement of the love and power of God have for the way we live? To answer those questions, allow me to take you back to the opening of this solemn liturgy. We began with what is called the Lucernarium, the service of light. The sacred fire was lit, candles were set ablaze, darkness was dispelled, and the ancient hymn of praise called the Exalted was proclaimed. Now the drama and the imagery of the liturgy at that moment was such that it would have been very easy to miss a curious but very important reference that's made in the text of that ancient hymn. I'd like to draw your attention to it in order to offer an answer to those questions. What's this all mean? And what are the implications of the resurrection of Jesus for our lives? Well, the reference made in that ancient hymn, The Exalted, is to bees. As the hymn offers to God the Father the Easter candle with its flame, Mention is made twice of these creatures, bees, whose work created the wax by which the candle was formed. Now this caught my attention a while back, and I've often wondered why referral to bees is felt to be important to mention that in the prayer. As you might have guessed, I'm no bee expert, but I suggest that what we can all observe from their industry is instructive for us. Bees move and they work by instinct, and it's as if each bee were assigned a particular task and no other. Collectively, bees work with great diligence and in a manner at once orderly and harmonious as they collectively produce that for which they were created. Implicit in this reference to bees and the way that they work is an invitation to us, namely, to live and work by faith, as bees do, by instinct. Here's what I mean. Faith in the resurrection of Christ is the joyful acknowledgement that Jesus is Lord. 
This means the humble and the hope-filled acceptance that his love and his word must govern my life, that how I live must be determined and directed by none other than Jesus. It belongs to him, to our risen Lord and to no one else, to assign to each person their duty as he calls us to follow him to eternal life and participate here on earth in his saving mission. He gives to each of us a unique task and commands that we exercise it with unwavering fidelity, great energy, never in competition with others, and always in ordered harmony. Much like bees. Now first, among the responsibilities Jesus assigns is the duty to be baptized. He made that clear when he once told Nicodemus that the grace of baptism is necessary to enter the kingdom of God. Tonight, St. Paul explains why this is so. The sacrament of baptism so unites us to Jesus in his death and rising that his very own risen life flows in us. Once we're baptized, he who is the resurrection and the life becomes himself the principle of our own lives. This vital union with the risen Lord unites us with all the baptized and thus forms the church. Together, we live under the risen Lord's sovereign rule, called to act in communion, to do that for which we have been recreated, which is to give joyful witness to Jesus before the world. This task is so urgent that we must be far busier even than bees as we go about it. Tonight, we are blessed to witness six persons respond to the call of the Lord and submit to baptism. They are joined by three other people already baptized who have heard the Lord's call to follow him as full members of the Roman Catholic Church. As we all surround them with our prayerful support and welcome them as our newest brothers and sisters, we shall also all recall our own baptism by the solemn renewal of our baptismal promises. May this be a moment for us all to surrender anew to the Lordship of the risen Christ and seek the grace always to be faithful to the direction and the tasks that he sets out for us. My brothers and sisters, on the first Sunday of Lent, our catechumens were enrolled for the Easter sacraments. Therefore, I would ask the elect, Gia Hu, Joshua Klukas, Cassandra Stade, Leslie Tram, Dalal Abdul Karim, and Simon Walters, Please come forward with your godparents. Dear friends, let us pray to Almighty God for our elect who are asking for baptism. Gia Hu, Joshua Klukas, Cassandra Stade, Leslie Tran, Dalal Abdul Karim, and Simon Walters. He has called them and brought them to this moment. May he grant them light and strength to follow Christ with resolute hearts and to profess the faith of the Church. May he give them the new life of the Holy Spirit, whom we are about to call down upon the waters of the font.
from everlasting death. By your incarnation, by your death and resurrection, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, be merciful to us sinners. Bring these chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Make this font holy by your grace for the birth of your children. Jesus, Son of the living God. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would bring an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed by, with the Holy Spirit and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. My dear elect, let us renounce Satan and make our triple profession of faith so that we may rise with Christ to a new life and serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, Jehu, Joshua Klukas, Cassandra Stade, Leslie Tran, Simon Walters, and Dalal Abdul Karim, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? 
those who are to be baptized, Gia, Joshua, Cassandra, Leslie, Dalal, and Simon, please come forward with your godparents. Gia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Joshua. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Cassandra, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Leslie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dalal, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Simon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Gia, Joshua, Cassandra, Leslie, Dalal, and Simon, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. May this white garment be a sign to you of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring it unstained into eternal life.
you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as people of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. My dear candidates, Dustin Harder, Moira Lavoie, and Jake Swartz, of your own free will you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In the presence of your sponsors and this community, I ask you to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. Dustin, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? Moira, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? Jake. Do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith you have professed in the presence of his family. Now, my dear candidates for confirmation, Gia, Joshua, Cassandra, Leslie, Dalal, Simon, Dustin, Moira, and Jake, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them and their successors to be baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the Church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, 
the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Gia be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joshua, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cassandra, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dustin, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Myra, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Jake, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Leslie, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Simon, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dalal, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church.
And so now I ask you all, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin will have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Christ shines forth from the Easter candle. May that flame of faith in our hearts inspire us as we offer prayers for the needs of all our brothers and sisters. For the Universal Church, that with Pope Francis and Archbishop Smith, 
we may proclaim the saving event of Easter. We pray to the Lord. For the nations of this world, that the kingdom of the risen Lord may spread through all societies and cultures. We pray to the Lord. For this worshiping community, that we will share the joyous news of the resurrection with those we meet. We pray to the Lord. For those who have received the sacraments of Christian initiation, that they may grow in true faith as we welcome them. We pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, that having died with Christ, they will return to life with him. We pray to the Lord. Father, receive the prayers of your church, celebrating the glorious victory of your risen Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of Christ.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, before we leave this evening, let's be sure that we offer a concrete gesture of support and congratulations and welcome to the newest members of the Catholic Church. Welcome. <laughs> And on behalf of my brother priests and deacon, wish to express to all of you our deepest sentiments for a very happy and blessed celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. A happy Easter to each and every one of you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia.